All right. All right, everybody. How you doing today? Welcome to another exciting day. We're going to call this Side Piece Fridays. And uh, I will be recording today. I didn't record the show yesterday. Well, if I did record the show, I did destroy it because there was a lot of trash talking about the exchanges and, and me. I like my kneecaps. I don't want to have a little Chinese mafia guys come hunt me down for talking whale manipulation stuff on Twitter. It's like that's why I don't talk about XRP either. I never tweet about XRP. <laughs> People ask me, what do you think of XRP? Oh, man, that's just great. You should buy you know, I heard you get shadow banned on uh, Twitter for talk, for saying bad things about them. Um, I don't like where we're at right now. Listen, everybody, I think we are very close, uh, very, very close to a possible top. Uh, I, I don't think we're very, I don't think we're far at all from a top here. Uh, I know that this last candle that closed out, we're all going to go through this. And one second, hold on a second, I am in the middle of a, a baby trade. Let me do my baby trade, just finish this baby out. Um, all right. Um, yeah, all right, so let's take a peekaboo here. I'm just going to kind of run through everything real quick. So, um... So yesterday I said, this is a bad, bad, bad trading area, right? And I still hold that true. I still think this is a very scary trading area. I don't like, uh, I don't like what's going on here. I don't like, uh, I don't like any of this. I'm telling you guys, I, I don't. Uh, very sketch, you know, and you're, you're talking about, you're, you're talking about a situation where this is like, I'll, I'll show you on my charts. Give me a second. Let me just run this trade out. I'm trying to and hold on a second. All right, cool, cool, cool. Just trying to execute a couple trades right here. I was in a long trade. I just took my profits from that long trade. <laughs> Uh, I had a little long scalp open from like 64 and change. I just posted it. I just took some profits off of it. And uh, it's my uh, my double cheeseburger money. Okay, that's my double cheeseburger money I just took off. So let's. I, I want to kind of just venture through this chart first. This is the chart that I've been posting over in the members area. Uh, this is my Ichi Cloud chart. Listen, we still have this Bear Kumo twist. Uh, that is right here, and uh, I just, I'm telling you, here we broke through the tech end last time. If you compare the last time, last few times that we broke through this area here, you see we broke through. This is my top. I I, I, I very limited top here. I still think 67 and change, and I even have a little bit higher that it can wick up over. So I do have this as a potential top area. You see, this is the last time it did come through the Tekken line right here. Now you can see that Tekken. Let me see if I can bring that baby to the front. Okay, so that Tekken line is right here. It's way down. It just dropped way below the price action now. Okay, so that Tekken line is way below the price action there. Uh, my arrow was, I have my arrow up to here. I do have the potential total top all the way up to there. I'm just going to leave my arrow right here. And what I'll do is I'll squeeze in a little baby, baby arrow right there. There we go. And I, I just, now let me show you. So here you go. Here's our, uh, this is my two, three, my three, two uh, count for bears and bulls. Uh, you see, we came up here. And what I did is I have this line up here. You can see every time that we've come up, we do get up here pretty high. We are in this test range in this band right here at the top. Uh, I feel that, and I'm going to squeeze this like this. So this is really where the, where the bread and the butter hits, right? Right up here. This is where all the decisions are made. I'm going to turn this little thing red. This is kind of the warning area right there, right? Uh, rejection area so you can see every time we've had now here's a bear this one was much lower right bull bull this bear got all the way up there peeked over dumped 
this bull to poke, 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 right? Here's another bear came up, just nicked it, fell down. Another bear never made it there. Bull, bull, and now we're in another potential, what I think is a bear. I think this is still a bear movement here. Now remember, getting up to the top here, you're going to get the skipping. So all this channel right here, all this stuff is just skipping right here. Right, so let's go down in here. Let's dig in and see what's happened before in the past with this. Uh, now, I want to show you that my RSI level here, when you look at my RSI level, this, you know, I, we had to break higher for every time these were bull runs. So see your bull run, you took off here. You can see where the RSI took off. So there's your RSI taking off bullish. Here's your RSI taking off bullish. Uh, here's your RSI taking off bullish and uh, this one right here. There you go. RSI taking off bullish right here. So when you do you see there is a difference. So this when this is this is this is something I'm looking for. I'm watching these levels and if it does get over uh, there it is. This is my last point right here. If this does climb up and over this at 53 RSI on the on the uh, the 12 hour I will I'll, I'll I'll be flipping right to a long trade I'll just scalp this puppy out as a long and it's a really easy trade setup I have no stress no worry now going all the way up here right now is gonna be a is gonna be a considerable price jump I think to get from here to here this will be a considerable price jump uh, speaking of considerable price jump listen this is one thing I want to go over with everybody it's a little harder. Let me just spread this chart out, right? So when you take a look at this and you take a look at these bull runs, right? You look at this. Here's the bottom of the bull run, right? There's the top of the bull run, right? Now, let's going to break this down for you. I'm going to pull up my price ring chart. So, right? So we agree. There's the bottom of the bull run. There's the top of the bull run. Oh, come on. Come on. Get up there. There you go. 2300 2400 points great run top to bottom awesome run right from the top to bottom there uh now we just ran the same distance right we just ran the same distance here's the bottom and we ran a whopping whopping huge 589 whole points count them all big run now, this is from the bottom right here. I counted this from the bottom, just like I came over here and I counted this one from the bottom. See, there's the bottom wick right there. I counted this from the bottom. There's your bottom wick right there on this run, right right here. And this is run. This run started right there. This is a 500-point run. Now, you see that how far the RSI is run up also. We've had a really good run up on the RSI here. And this is a heavy resistance point for the bears, uh, for the for the bulls, because you can see they, they run into this gap area right here. And you've got this gap, and it's between 49 RSI and a 53.8. And this is a this is a very tough that the, the bulls have got to get up out of this gap in order to, to convert this into a, a bullish trade, right? To, to convert this into a bullish run. And you see right now they're getting a little rejection right now. Now they did break out of the, they clearly broke out of the triangle right here, right? Now this could just move sideways back and forth and back and forth and get one more run up, staying, trying to stay within this, uh, this wedge pattern here, this rising wedge. All right, so this is this was eventually going to come to a head. We knew it was going to happen. And, you know, there's a couple different ways you could probably draw this thing. You know, you could start with this tip and this tip and go up. But I did this one and this one. And we did break up over it. So that's, that's, that's kind of a bullish sign to break over it. If we go back and we look at the last few runs. All right, here we go. And uh, what do you think? Right there. So there you go. Like peaked out, peaked out, and then died, right? So tip, 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 peaked over, peaked over, and then died. And I bet this one's going to be a hell of a lot harder to dial in. Jesus, Lord, they couldn't make this easy, could they? 
Uh, yeah, let's see if we can get this perfect. And a uh, little, let's see, is this, I gotta, and, yep, yep, came out of the triangle, came out of the wedge line, I'm sorry, came out of the wedge line, scoot that baby up there, there we go, so came out of the wedge, uh, probably a little bit harder to dial that one in, came out of the wedge, came out of the wedge, now, the other thing when I look at this that's very interesting is every time we went on these kind of bearish runs right here, right? Every time we run in the bearish runs, and this is something I, I really had to look closely at, is there was kind of a, a precursor, right? I mean, you kind of got one, two, three, right? One, two, and they kind of started lower, higher, higher. Lower, higher, higher, lower, higher, lower, lower, I'm uh, sorry, lower, higher, higher. And then here we are. Now we did have this one little lower here, right? So we had the one lower. And then I don't know if you could count this as a second higher. And then this would have been your third higher up, right? But I mean, this definitely looks like one. This could be two, going to drop down. And then if this dump dumps down again, like I'd expect it to, comes back up and dumps over one time, this would make me a bearish pattern. So you can see there is a there is a bearish pattern that plays out right here on all of these bearish runs. And we're in this bear channel, and I'm going to call this, uh, what should we call this? Uh, I'm going to call it a... Uh, um, we're gonna call it a bull gap, All right? So you've got this bull, this bullish trap, bullish trap gap, there it is. So you've got this bullish trap gap right here, from here to here, and what this is, it's exactly like it sounds. This is clearly a trap. These are all bull traps right here, every single one of these. Oh, it's gonna be amazing, boof, and then you just got <laughs> slaughtered, right? And this is what this looks like. They're just bringing the bulls and to slaughter them. Now let's go over here and let's take a, a look at all of these bull traps and see what happened the last time we had these last bull traps, right? So here was one of the bull traps, right? Right there. Uh, there's one. There's So there's your, wait, there's, so here's your first bull trap right here. There's your second bull trap. Now look, RSI is lower, price is higher. RSI is higher, price is lower. Okay, so let's see if that correlates. All right, price is lower, price is higher, RSI is lower, price is lower, RSI is higher. So this is good, the pattern. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, um, yes, okay, so higher, 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 lower, lower, lower. Okay, so let's see what we got over here to see if we can get a pattern out of this, All right? Hmm, so it doesn't look like we've started a pattern yet, so this could possibly be bullish. All right, uh, let's see here. Hmm. Boy, let me pull this off. Peel this. Come here. Get over here, Price. Get off there. All right. Pull this off. I want to get a good look at this. Um, so now what would have to happen here is we would have to fall out here, right? At this point. We'd have to fall out at this point. So here the price of this RSI was lower, price was higher. Yeah, okay, so here you have lower RSI, higher price, higher RSI, lower price. It would have to fall out one more time. And what's going to have to happen is the price has to drop lower than this point for this to be a bearish move. So in order for this to be bearish, this drop right here, and let's label that, right? So this drop, in order for this to be a bear move, uh, a 
the price has to be lower than uh, okay let me see here let me figure this out hmm Yeah, so the price just has to be lower than the previous price without breaking 53 RSI. It has to be the lower. Alright, so for the bear move, the price has to be lower than the previous price. Alright, so here, there, so the RSI is lower, price is higher, price is lower, RSI is higher. Mm. Price is lower, RSI is higher. Okay, okay, so price is lower. How would you discover the bottom of this is my question. So every one of these, when it falls, it has to fall farther than the lowest price. So every time it falls, it has to break the previous low. All right, so here's that. Fell, climbed back up. So it just, yes, it has to break the previous lower price. Remember the price has to be lower than the previous low price. What was our low price, Sean? 60, 50, 58? 57, 50. 57, 50. That was the June low, you mean? Yeah, the one we just had. What's the lowest price we just had here in August? Or what oh, in August. Was? That was 58, I'd say 59 even, depending upon exchange. Roughly around 59. There we go, okay. Okay, all right. So we got that. There we go. So what has to happen, this RSI has to fall, but the price has to fall lower than $5,400. Otherwise, this is a bullish move to the top. All right? Do you agree? Am I wrong? Am I right? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, you're, you're just trying to use what historically has happened in the past with the RSI based on the price movement to deduct what pattern we're setting up and clearly as we go through this i mean i guess what we're arguing here is do we have another couple hundred dollars upside maybe a little bit more before we set ourselves up for the repeating pattern which you brought up which is basically we hit a rejection area combined with our continued lower highs we keep putting in on any kind of a bullish bounce and then the history is going to repeat ourselves you multiply that by the lack of money flow currently in the market compared to where we had been on those other uh, uh, movements in the RSI price action. And that's what we're kind of seeing a very similar pattern kind of play out right now. We're starting to play out. Got it. All right. Um, so I'm going to print this baby off. All right. Go for it, buddy. You got um, So let's hold on a second. Let me print this puppy off. I always like to. Especially the importanto stuff, you know. <laughs> Got to save the important stuff for the for the members. All right, here we go. All right, okay. So there's that. All right. So let me. Sorry, I wanted to bring that chart up first for everybody. Uh, let's see what chart we got here. All right. Um, okay. Pretty clean chart. All right. So I'm just gonna kind of march through what's. Uh, so all right on the six hour. Uh, I'm just gonna let's do a quick run through here. Okay, so number one, uh, six hour has a a golden cross. 
golden cross between the 7 and the 50. Okay, so this is good. This is a good golden cross. Now, I always like to say, everybody knows what the vamp likes to say is, uh, I like to see, but on the 6 hour, the 6 hour is on a 6, and the vamp likes to see reversals on 6s. Right, so I like to see reversals on sixes. We are in a six right there. Let's go down to the four hour. Oh, look, and the four hours is six. Uh, four hours got no help right here. Uh, the four hour though is on a six. Uh, six also on a um, should be a little more specific on a green six. Green six. Oh, no, I don't need that. All right, so I see that. So we got that. So I that's bearish. Up oh, twelve hour. Oh man, it's just stacking up here. Just stacking up. So we're gonna put the twelve hour on a green six. Cut this. All right, so we got three timelines all stacked on a green six right now. All right, so if you look over in the 12 hour, we have the 12 hours holding support on the 30 MA. Uh, four hours, no. There's your heavy 6300 is where you have a lot of support down to 6300. There it is again. Uh, okay. It's that bullish MA right here. This bullish cross. Got a little bullish action right here. Uh, let's go up to the one day. Okay, so the one day is on only on a green five. Uh, we did have this great one day reversal candle. Uh, then pull this right up. Remember, this is the candle I didn't like. It was bullish last time. Sure enough, this thing played out bullish. But look, it has not topped the previous high of this candle. We still haven't broken this candle. And I don't think we did it either last time we did this. on I want to say it was Litecoin. I think it was the Litecoin 50, uh, the Litecoin Weekly. So that didn't, uh, that didn't help us. Now, we did just start a brand new candle. On this daily, uh, let's go up to our two-day. Uh, no new candle yet. Resistance levels a little bit higher. So you got a really good resistance level up there. Let's look at our daily. Uh, boy, the resistance is real high. Six hour. Four hour. Wow, there's just no upper resistance at all. Like the only upper resistance is way up here. So there's your upper resistance. It's way up here. Let's see if over three day. Ah, there we go. So there's our resistance now. So resistance is dropping on the three day chart. Uh, same funky candle. Look at this big funky spinning top candle all right and then weekly uh so the weekly here is giving us trying to give us a big hammer candle at the bottom and it is on a red two only for the weekly let me just i want to buzz and see if i see any substantial candles here no nope Nope, no, nothing, no, no candle pattern set up at all. I don't see anything at all. Just this big block candle. What is the big block candle, Chone? What do you mean the big block what candle? The block candle. I know there's a pattern for these block candles. It's not oh, a long just... line candle. It's not a long line candle. It's, what is it? What do they call There's a name for them. But it's almost a perfect block. Hmm. 
I'm gonna have to Google that. All right, so this there's kind of I, I don't see a lot. There's there's just this is kind of neutral. There's unless you the only bullish thing is you got this golden cross, right? I, I see this bullish golden cross on the uh, on the four hour. No candle patterns help me. There's none of these candle pa candle patterns help me. Uh, this solid candle here. I have to pull this up over here. Let's see what we can find. Let me let me let me dig through my little cheat sheet chart. There we go. All right, let's take a look at this one. All right, so Solid candle, nothing. I mean, I don't really see. I'm looking for just a solid block candle. I know we got them somewhere. Hmm. All right, people out in the audience, help me out with this. Solid block candle. Where's my, oh, my candle charts? Where's I got one more big candle sheet sheet in here? Where's it at? There it is. There we go. Um... Stick sandwich. I think it's called a stick candle. Is that what it is? Just called a stick? Looks like a stick candle. Hmm. Doesn't help me. I don't really see anything. Let's see if anybody has anything out there. Uh, Maru Booza candle. Uh, Mar Marabozu. Actually, that's what it is. Marabozu. Mar All right. That's perfect. what Chad, I've heard Chad's use that several times. All right. Let's go and let's Google a Marabozu candle. Got it. Good job, buddy. Thanks, Express. You're the man. All right. Let's go hunt this baby down so everybody knows what we there got going go. on here. That's bullish. All right. Um,. There it is. Most bullish. Most bullish. I wonder if it has to be a complete... Can't, or if it can hand it... No, no, look, it doesn't. It can't have... Ah, this one. See, look, this one has a little wick on it. Yeah, it has to have no wick, it looks like. Ah, On, yeah. Basically, nut bottom to nut top is just wickless. Yeah, let's see what we got over here. Ah, nope. I mean, we have a wick on both sides. Damn it. Damn you. Is that, is that the same thing on all exchanges? Anybody see any of those uh, Marabozu on all the exchanges? I don't see. I just don't see. I don't see all the other exchanges. Yeah. There's a, yeah, there's a yeah, there's a wick there. Yeah. So yeah, there's just there's two wicks on here. So that that takes that candle out of contention, which suckies. All right, you know one thing I want to do, I want to bring up real quick. I'm gonna bring up a who oh, side by side. I'm gonna change this over. Pull this to LTC USD. Come here. I want to pull us to weekly. I did this in the members area. All right, see, so, no, no, totally different. See, so this here, here, here you go. See, so this is, this is what played out on, uh, so this is what played out over on Litecoin. You got this candle, here you got this big, look, you got the hanging candle, you got the big uh, up, up candle, uh, inverted hammer candle, and then it did the same thing. Look, this did the same thing. It did a second, like almost inverted hammer candle. Now on Litecoin, it just ate tootie, right? It just totally ate butt and died. Okay. Uh, here we went the opposite direction. So this does not help me out at all. You know what? This kind of setup right here, I wonder if this is an inside fakey candle. This could have been an inside fakey over here a couple a couple days ago. 
This could have been an inside fakie setup from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 days ago. This kind of looks like an inside fakie. I believe that is the, <laughs> the right? technical term for it. <laughs> yeah, let me see. Inside fakie, fakie candle. I know I have these also. There we go. Images. Yeah, see, that's what there is. There's the inside fakie right there. Bearish fakie without pin bar. Bearish fakie with pin bar. See, this kind of looks like a bearish fakie setup. Hmm. Gonna have to keep an eye on this, but because that says, yeah, I know it's daily and weekly, but I'm still looking at the the candle setup and configuration. So I just wanted to make sure I had. I just just trying to make keeping apples to apples, right? Just trying to look for the same exact setups. All right. Um. Okay, where are we at here? So, uh, listen, I do have a high point here. Um, so I'm going to bring up this other chart over here. Here we go. Uh, so this is my other chart that I've been using in the members area. This is my, basically my dead cat bounce chart right here. So you see, we get the dead cat bounce, dead cat bounce, dead cat bounce. And oh, look, another dead cat bounce, right? Which we got two dead cat bounces off the 6k range. Now this one dead cat bounced off the 6k, but then mooned. Look, it still does the same thing. So they mean... These still come and dead cap bounce lower and then pretty much almost every time. And you get the continuation pattern. We're now down on the 6. Now every single time this happens, look, we, we break through this 30 MA right there, right? We come through, we poke through the 30 MA. Now we had a little more energy here. We had a little more push here, a little more oomph. Here was the 30, a little less oomph. And then you get down here, right, off our 6K bounce. And now we are literally kissing this 30. We're on the top side of it. It's now acting as support for us. So that's actually a good thing to, that this is support. And in about um, two, uh, about one candle possibly, we could have a golden cross with this. Now I will be watching this carefully. If we lose this support line, Right? If we lose this support line and drop lower, we're going to be uh, in a world of hurt. And it'll be a pretty quick swift drop down because you'll be following this up with a death cross on the 12 hour really quickly. And I wanna, I'm pretty sure I probably forgot to put that in my other chart. So we, I want to add that we will be seeing a possible bearish and or bullish cross. Well, and this will be a death or golden cross in about two candles. So this is probably got a full day uh, in order to close this out. So you got to keep above this. Uh, we got to hold the price action. So if the price action drops below 64.50, this could be in a world of hurt here. But right now we are using the 30 as support. And, and that's kind of, hold on a second, let me get over here. And that's kind of what I got. I don't have much more. Cheds? Right. Jonas. Jonas, <laughs> Jesus Lord, fail one today, fail one. Ooh. All right, go for it, buddy. Go for it, John. Yeah, uh, can, you, can you see my, my yep, screen Yep, you're good. You're up. All right. All right, thanks, guys. Hey, thanks for being here. 150 of our closest friends this evening. Thank you for joining us on a Friday night. I always like to have everybody in the house and like to talk some Bitcoin with Vamp. Um, I wanted to basically touch on a couple things here. Um, there we go. There I am. Okay. So I, I got a few charts I want to kind of bring up. Uh, I'm, I'm in total agreement in terms of where VAMP's indicators are showing him in terms of the support and the resistance we're currently seeing here. I actually show similar price points, and I'm going to show a couple other indicators that kind of correspond to what he's looking at. The first thing I kind of want to bring up here, and I'll just kind of have some little fun with this, but, uh, um, We'll do, do this here. So we get a little Joker smile happening here. What I really want to bring this up is we clearly have this tightening pattern here, 
which brings us into this area kind of of our full smile here. And again, we're talking about an area roughly around $6,700 to $6,800. So I want you to remember that, and I'll bring that up later because what we have here, oh, I've lost my... Let's get rid of this, get rid of this here. So a couple things here. I wanted to bring up this quick um, parallel channel that has been acting as support. Now I kind of see this area here as a bear trap. And what we see as we've moved higher, actually angle this up just a little bit more because that's what I was looking for. There we go. And then that comes down here. Perfect, something like that. So we have this middle resistance area. Actually go a little higher here to there, perfect. Okay, so we have this middle resistance area that has really held the price down back here in this part of August when it tried to break through, started this little bearish run here. And then when we actually broke bullish here, once again, our middle channel resistance acted as very strong resistance, repelling the price. Once again, we retested our lower channel support Rode that for a little bit longer. And now, once again, we're setting up for a situation where we want to retest our middle channel resistance line. Now, back here, that price was at 65.66. But as we move higher here with these more green candles, we're approaching again on the four hour chart another retest. And that could put us again somewhere in that 67 to $6,800 range, corresponding with our smile and corresponding with our middle channel resistance here. What this could be setting up. If this area here potentially rejects initially, and then if the price is able to break through and hold this support, is another test of our upper channel resistance. And that basically could bring us to our 7K, potentially 7200 area. It also would coincide right now where our 200 MA currently is on our four hour chart. So I'm gonna hide our little thing there and I'm gonna bring up our Bollinger Bands. This is fascinating. Remember on yesterday's show on the four hour chart, we were talking about now that the middle BB is now acting as channel support, then we can assume that a test of our upper BB is going to be our next area we wanna to touch there. And sure enough, it's currently acting as resistance. However, because we are hanging up here with this bullish move here, what we're getting is a couple of these bull crosses starting to set up with my EMAs, my 12, my 55, gonna hide my 200 just a moment here, uh, and our 26 EMA. So we got some good bullish momentum here if we can keep this going. But I do expect our upper BB to act as strong resistance. Now, I like the fact that we're actually getting a lot tighter here on our BBs. This bullish move has brought the spacing of this a lot tighter. Now remember, tightening the BB like here and like here brought on a much larger move. And we really haven't had anything very big like this in quite some time. And you see how tight our middle BBs on a higher time frame, like our four hour had to get before that move. So we're beginning to set this up here with several more candle hours on our four hour will bring this ever so tighter and potentially the tighter we get the more larger quicker move we tend to kind of see now that can go both ways bullish and bearish if we break above our upper resistance line here again remember we get rejected very quickly when we break there so i would not want to buy into the strength here just because i feel we'd be in an overbought situation if we go to a higher time frame let's a six hour here, we actually see we have a little bit more room to run. This would correspond with a wick out on the four hour, but the six hour could touch again. Another example where 6,700 ish area is showing our next area of resistance. Go to 12 hour on our Bollinger. Again, we're getting a little tighter here. 66 and change is showing our resistance. And lastly, I'll talk about the daily on the Bollinger. And we see we're getting a little tighter. We're starting to pull these close. This was very wide on our daily BB. I want to get something like here and here. So several days of this sideways price action is beginning to once again tighten up our Bollingers on a daily higher time frame. So this will take a little more time. Uh, for these to pull together, but what that is telling us is that when they do get tighter, especially a lot tighter, that can usher in a larger bullish move. Um, I want to bring up a couple charts here. Uh, let's see, where's my base chart? Okay, so this is what hey, I talked Joan, about. Joan, I'll be, yep. right, I'll be yeah. right back, buddy, okay? No worries. Okay, okay. this is what I, uh, I was talking in our um, VIP group in the Discord channel. 
And a lot of that basically had to uh, do with some of our bull uh, targets. And I wanted to bring up, let's see, which chart is it? That's not. This one here. Well, you know what? Let's let's draw it here. So, a couple of things I wanted to bring up here. So, let's go to our six-hour chart, and I'm gonna hide my BBs. I'm gonna keep my 55, my 12, and my 26. So, for the first, actually, you know what? Let me hide my five. So, 12, 26. Have my 30. Hide my. There we go. Okay, so I just wanted to show these two. So EMA 12, EMA 26. And what we have going on here is our first bull cross on a six-hour chart since we crossed bearishly at the end of our of, uh, July. <clears throat> this is our first bull cross of our EMA 12 and our EMA 26. Remember, our lower uh, time frame EMA is crossing bullishly up and into our higher time EMA 26. That's a bull cross. And we're seeing that for the first time right here uh, in the month of August. That is significant. Um, now, <clears throat> we want this to continue, and this cross itself has actually pushed a decent amount of bullish momentum into the market. It's kind of why you see the continuation here, because this is significant. This is an example where a cross can add some extra momentum to the price. But if we look on a daily, we see actually when we did bear cross here, and you actually see how far we still have to go to test our 26. So I expect our 26, if we test it for the first time, will be very strong resistance. And once again, we're seeing that confluence of resistance around the 6770 area there. That's very notable because what we have here is another example of where 67 and change to about 6800 will be acting as very strong resistance when it's initially touched, if we can get up here. Why is that so? Because what it represents was our previous our previous neckline of our inverse head and shoulders that brought us our great bull run of july where we gave a lot of that back and what that also represents is basically our fibonacci um extension that we were kind of watching here uh play out as to what we could get from a one-to-one -one extension of what we were calling our wave one so we were basically using this and this and we were basically saying, okay, if we're going down here to our wave, we're looking for some sort of kind of double tap of our resistance here at 66, which is our first goal. And then if we can break through that, a 786 area here would put us right again. I keep bringing up 67, 75, $6,800 as kind of that next resistance zone. Let's look at it a different way, though where if this was a one here, and now we're looking at this as basically a wave three extension. So we've already broken through our one-to-one -one ratio. That tells me that this is basically playing out as potentially a wave three. We've already hit a conservative one, two, three point six extension. And now what we want to shoot for is something between our one, six, one, eight. And I don't know why I have, don't have it, but I want to add here our one, point seven seven eight six extension and that puts us right here again six seven change so we have another example of where this six seven hundred six eight hundred dollar area if the bulls can teach to push higher how that's our next area of super strong resistance is basically what we talked about in our vip chat room as the next areas you wanted to take profit if you longed back at this retrace here and hold now what makes this area so important i'm going to do something different here um we're, we're, we're trying to find pull back right here so I want to kind of see why we were able to hold and kind of why we were able to, to basically bounce in this area here. And from a swing low to a swing high where we topped off there, you know, <clears throat> once we were able to find support at our 78.6 area, which was resistance, we kind of get over it, back over it once again. So now it's all of your support, and that's what's bringing us higher here. How many times? One, two, three. This is our fourth time we're finding resistance right now, a hair under 6,600. So I'm watching for two things here. 
a break. Remember, we've wicked out here and we've wicked out here on the four hour chart. So a close above on the four hour, and more importantly, a close above on our one hour, which we've still barely yet to do above $6,600 would be notable. Now, how many green candles? We're on our fourth green hourly candle in a row, especially after two really nice ones here. I like these wicks. Remember, we're getting bought up. If we give a lot back, the bulls are stepping in. They're stepping in. We get these nice longer wicks here. They're getting a little smaller, though. Like we're getting a little tired in our bullish momentum here. We want to kind of see this follow through. And remember, we're still in a bear market. So when profits are gained, people are going to take some money off the table, putting a little bit of that sell pressure in mind. I want to briefly talk about what I'm seeing in the RSI and the stochastics. And I want to talk about our four hour here because I've been kind of watching this channel here and kind of readjusting uh, my resistance zones based on what's happening here. And because we touched off here, I was feel comfortable raising our resistance zone on the top. And once again, we're right there hitting it one more time. Now, if we can break this on the four hour and Above, we're only 47 minutes into this candle. That would be very encouraging for another bullish push higher and testing somewhere in these areas. We have to give it some notarization that it took us a while to crawl out of 6,000 and we've been slowly and surely doing it and doing it not too fast, which is important because we're building slower and stronger bases the more we're actually to rise up. Uh, we talked about yesterday how our MACD on our four hour for the first time in all of August is positive with both of our indicators showing we're basically positive here. We noticed yesterday that was the first time and we saw our bullish follow through. So our indicators consistently, slowly and surely are showing consistently a little bit more bullishness, a little bit more bullishness and it is following through. We talked about how well a lot of the alts did yesterday and how we're kind of seeing some all today, but the higher we go, the, the quicker we're basically about to bash into some of our resistance levels that we've been watching getting ever so closer in this bullish move here. So a reset and a little cool down of some of our momentum we've seen over the past 24 to 48 hours uh, could be possible. But if we keep going through some of these bullish cross setups here, that's going to add some continued fuel into what we see here. So I wouldn't be surprised if we keep pushing here and try and retest our areas I was talking about, 6650 to 6750, when we start cracking into some serious resistance areas. And then judge for yourself to see what kind of profit taking, what kind of resistance we're basically going to hit in that area. The bulls are still having a little bit more momentum here and getting a little bit cocky. In the price action here, let's see this continue and see how long we can push it. The very last thing I want to briefly touch base on is our shorts here. Long and shorts, remember, they were rising pretty significantly the past couple of days. They're in this channel here of a rising, ascending, broadening wedge, which is bullish. And it looks like we're basically looking to retest our lower uh, support line somewhere down here. Once this test, I would actually see this as a bearish signal for Bitcoin because this is also an area here where Bitcoin actually uh, wicked out. And then this run here is where the shorts began to load up again. We still have our gap. We came so close to filling it. But we didn't get there yet. We topped off at 60, 36,000 contracts. Our gap fill is 37 and change. So I do expect one more push higher, which means the shorts would be loading up one more time, which means there's probably some sort of either bearish action in Bitcoin or people are loading their shorts into the bullishness of a couple hundred dollars more addition of price of Bitcoin. So that's kind of what I see. Wouldn't be surprised if we have another 100 to 100 bucks ahead of us before we start seeing some major resistance. We're closing the week, getting to the weekend. We're getting really close to our end of our candle here for the week. We're putting in a pretty decent weekly candle here. I mean, we were talking about yesterday. Are we trying to put in some sort of a star? It does stink that we actually put in a lower high on this candle already. That would negate some of that. But for now, we're putting in a decent tweezer here on our weekly, and we do see the last time we put something kind of similar in, we actually had a nice little bullish move here. So the question is, is this that next hump that's going to put us in a bullish move here, but a lower high? Then our 8,500, maybe something around 7,200 
very possible, or is there one more test of 6700 to $6,800, $6,900 before we kind of ride higher? So far, I'm kind of getting a little more optimistic that that 6800 range, if the rejection, if the sell-off isn't so fierce, we could try and hold around six. And then basically try for that one more push higher to retest 7K. A lot has to happen in the next couple of days to kind of keep that momentum going. But if we close with a very nice bullish green uh, hammer candle almost weekly, that would basically set up a good start to next week. Two days left for that to happen. So we're going to see. We're going to be cautious in our trades here and see what's happened. A lot of money was made yesterday, especially in a lot of the alts. You want to see it continue. But remember, you're buying into a lot of the money already made. So if you're still long or if you plan to go long on a couple of these alts here, keep that in mind. A lot of easy money has been made. And the first time it's had a trouble, people might cash out quickly, causing a big sell off. But for now, I'm still seeing a lot of bullishness play out in the market, um, relatively speaking, from where in the price of Bitcoin. So be cautious, but I'm definitely seeing some bullishness slightly getting overextended here on some of these indicators. The RSI in the one hour, not yet, but getting closer to our 70 area. Our stochastics beginning to top out again. And the last thing about the stochastics on the four hour, I noticed we're getting back to this four day pattern of a nice bullish momentum. And normally on the Ford hour, we're only up here. Here's an example, we're here for about five days. So we're getting closer to the end of our bullish move here on the stochastics, uh, which is interesting. But remember, our daily actually shows from how pancaked we were back in the first week of August, we're actually moving higher here. And this shows bullish momentum can continue. I would be looking for another top off here somewhere a couple days, continue this bullish process here until we find some strong rejections. So a lot of mixed signals, but based on yesterday's price action, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if the bulls have a little more momo in them uh, before we start hitting some rejection areas. Okay. All right. Good stuff, man. Excellent, excellent stuff. So uh, I just want to make sure we go through. I'm going to kind of rip through our alts real quick. Let me switch this back over. All right. Let me bring this back over. And I uh, just want to make sure we go through just a couple of the uh, calls that we both had. Uh, let's go through the Chone. Chone man had some. Look, I love the new charts. This guy. Look at Chone. Look at all the posting this guy does. And all the videos, uh, come on over here, you guys, G get a chance. So, look, uh, nailing out his bull targets. He did hit bull target number two, and there it is. Great job, great charts. I love your new charts. They're amazing. He's, so he's, he's, uh, he's making some really good calls over here. Great stuff. Uh, I want to also bring up the vamp area. So in the vamp area, I did kind of go through, and we do, where are we at, where are we at, where are we at? Alrighty, and that was all BTC. All right, so here's kind of some of the things we had. Uh, some of our calls, whoop, whoop, wrong one. Uh, here's Ethereum. Uh, some of our Ethereum calls. So the Ethereum calls were definitely off the bottom of this here. Uh, this wick, uh, then to bounce up. Let's see how Ethereum is doing right now. How are you doing, Ethereum? Uh, Not that bad. Let's go. Let's, I think I have an Ethereum chart somewhere. Where is my Ethereum chart? If I were an Ethereum chart, where would I hide? Uh, we'll run this one right here. All right, so let's pull up and see what we have for Ethereum. Uh, there we go. Here. Ooh, all right. So one thing I like to everybody needs to really be aware of on these uh, weekly charts. All these weekly charts, unlike BTC, these weekly charts all have these wicked, wicked reversal candles forming. Now I know it's a long way for this to get played out, and it's it's a lot of hours, and and you know you got you got all of Friday, the rest of Friday. 
You got uh, actually what what today? It's it's uh it's, it's Saturday. Uh, so we just closed UTC Saturday, right? Right. Yeah, so, yeah. so we still got 48 more hours for these candles to hold. And if they can hold up in here anywhere, uh, you're, you're going to be looking really good for a, a nice bullish bounce. I mean, honestly, these candles are playing out just beautifully. Uh, here was some of our targets. We did come up hitting into target one. Uh, so we broke free. Now, if we do, there's a chance and out. Listen, I mean, this is a great bounce, uh, $250 all the way up to 320. Now I got to tell you, this is a really tough spot for me right here in the $320 range. Uh, I really think that this is, this is, this, it's got to break out of the $320 range for me to really get all squishy on this, okay? Now these charts are new, these are all updated right here. So we did have this bleeding, uh, massive bleeding nine on the daily. Now it did just flip, it's got a one and a green two on it. I always look to one to four candles for this to, to pull up before it reverses one more time. Uh, the weekly death cross, you can see there it is. This is still a ways out from this big massive weekly death cross. Yeah, your resistance, you still got resistance above you. $330 and change is kind of where it's at. You've got a bunch of resistance right up there in the 330 range. And I can drop a uh, line right here. So you're looking right about in here. So you have another really heavy resistance line. And this is with your weekly... And this is with your weekly 100 MA, right? So your weekly 100 MA is just parked right there above you. Uh, you do have now, I, uh, uh, what do we got here? The two day, let's run this over to a two day right here. Uh, nothing, just more resistance in this 128 to 130 area, which we already know. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not a lot going on. So we did get this great bounce up. We did get some good targets. Uh, let's see what happens here. Now, I, I like I said, this 320 range up to 330 is a really tough one. It's a tough nut to crack. Uh, if BTC does break out, we can look for this to punch all the way up to 350. Uh, that would be my secondary target, which would be a hundred dollar rise, which would be really amazing. Now. We just gave up a lot, right? We just gave up a ton. Uh, we gave up a ton of price action right here, over 200 and some points. So we just took back a little bit. Uh, this, if this did ramp up, you'd get $100 back, 100 points back on this. This is, you know, not bad at all. Not bad at all. But like I said, we got a long way to go. I really am skeptical that this can get up over, you know, this would be my first target right here, uh, the 330 range. I, I'm going to give it a lesser percentage to get up to that 350, okay? Uh, let's go over to uh, Litecoin. Uh, you got your Ethereum chart can up? I, yeah, yep, let yep. me do Put a little Ethereum, Ethereum chart up. Yep, yep. Go Perfect, I'm ready to go, yep. Pull, let's, let me pretend for a second I'm ready. <laughs> All right, and go for it. Perfect, great stuff. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I agree with that. And the area, that's kind of how I see Ethereum. First, we have to acknowledge that Ethereum took a beating here. You know, June, this was 550, and we just bought them around the, the what, two, uh, 250 area. So, within a couple months, we almost gave back almost you know 50 percent of our valuation there just a brutal sell-off in ethereum and as we know a lot of that kind of had to do with icos kind of dumping some of the last valuable assets they actually had i have counted five waves here i see kind of a clear kind of five-way down structure and what I've done is I've basically used a wave three extension of our wave five and look where we wicked out. We broke seven, eight, six, but on the daily, we closed above it. And we're finding that it's a very strong support. So this works out to be wave three as longer than wave five and wave five as shorter than a one to one to wave three. So I'm very comfortable with this being a bottoming area and a bottoming bounce. The question is two things here. Are we doing a, a full impulse wave? Is this getting a wave one of a nice five wave structure? 
or we kind of do some sort of an ABC and then to basically fail and go back down to a one, two, three, four, five. So VAMP's initial resistance of around 330 completely corresponds with my resistance area of around 324, which is right where our one our 61.8 uh, had acted as support for a moment until it was broken. And now once again, if the price goes higher, it's gonna act as resistance. And then we have our other resistance line already set here, $60, uh, $361, which would probably coincide with a bull break of Bitcoin closing in on, I don't know, closer to 7K or at least 6850. And then from there, we can discuss that later. But for now, I'm in agreement with Vam that our next major resistance line, also corresponding with our EMA 12 on our daily chart, will be around 324 to 330, only about five to ten dollars more than we have currently in Ethereum. Now we had a gorgeous candle yesterday. I'll totally acknowledge that. But you have to ask yourself, is this really where you want to go long in Ethereum? Even if this has a little bit more uh, oomph left in it, there's going to be a pullback in this. And is it maybe the, the, the more prudent option to wait for the pullback, either if it is a wave two or if it is a B wave of your correction there, at least you'll have a better risk versus reward situation than buying into this much strength. Last thing I want to briefly mention on Ethereum is the RSI. Once again, on the daily chart. We've seen a situation here where at Ethereum below, I'll just call it 15, uh, 20 on a daily RSI is, is kind of a great buy. The last time you bought down in this area here, remember this was what, Ethereum, what, $365. Uh, once we actually got a nice move here, we had a great bullish one. So once again, we were back in this area. And once again, we've had a V bottom on our daily RSI. So this is another example where you've been rewarded if you've purchased Ethereum down this area. Now, I'm on Coinbase here, but I know, I think uh, this one shows, no, is it the other? Oh, yeah, it's funny. that's Ethereum Classic. I don't know. One of these shows an area of three where Ethereum, Maybe it was this one. Where So once we got back into unprecedented and oversold on the daily, that was important. Now, I want to bring up the faster the weekly because we see what oversold really means. And oversold on a weekly Ethereum can bring us sub 30 to as low as 25. Now, we're at 37. Now, it stinks that we're below 50 because we want to hold 50 on all time frames. The higher we go, the more meaningful that is. We have a long way to crawl up here if we want to get some bullish momentum. And even this nice bull move in Ethereum has more or less flattened out our RSI instead of even bringing it higher here. We see where we can go on our RSI. We see what our sold is like. Right now, we have a nice bounce coming in. Our weekly candle looks very nice right now, potentially a bottom hammer if we can keep it going. But we have two days left to put some bullishness in here. A bottom hammer would hit the 100 at 334. So, yeah, there's a lot of indicators sewing. Maybe have another 10 to maybe 15 bucks left in the bullishness of Ethereum corresponding with a nice bull break, a couple hundred dollars more of Bitcoin. Also on our weekly Bollinger's, another case for a very strong bottom Bollinger support. Once again, our BBs told us where an area of a good support zone could be and potentially a good scalping long once this area was touched. Remember on a very high time frame like the weekly, we don't like to break through uh, for very long. So this is our first touch and break of our lower Bollinger. The price didn't like that. Very oversold and a great entry to get in uh, sub lower Bollinger for a risk versus reward trade. And so far, this was a really nice trade here. So with the next two days playing out on Ethereum, let's see where we can go. We still have not crossed bullishly on our stochastics on our weekly. Okay, that would be a good first sign because we see here what happens when we do cross bullish on our weekly stochastics? We can have a very nice bull run. Haven't gone through any of this yet. So we're still in the early stages of maybe trying to create a turnaround of Ethereum. But sure enough, if Bitcoin breaks, breaks bearish, so goes the nation. Still a very nice upward bullish move on our daily stochastics. So I'm seeing signs that we can go a little bit higher, but also signs that might want to wait for a little bit of a pullback here as we start to hit these upper resistance areas to make your next room theory. Yeah.
Awesome. Awesome. Good stuff. All right. Uh, let's pull up uh, Litecoin. You want to run Litecoin? Go for it. Sure. Uh, okay. So let's acknowledge here. Bounce. Litecoin was 49 bucks. what, seven, eight days ago with uh, 62.50. A lot of suckouts here, a lot of volatility. <clears throat> We're finding on the daily. Uh, second candle in a row. We've actually found support on our EMA 12. That is noticeable because that's been major resistance, especially here and here when we wicked out. And it also is the first time in August that we're finding support above our EMA 12. Very important. Our next resistance, 55, that's $66. Wait, I took that back. That's the middle Bollinger at $66 on our daily chart. That is our next area of resistance. Take a look here at our stochastics. Long bottoming area here on a daily. There's our bull bounce looking right here. We keep putting in lower highs, though, on our stochastic. We want to try and break this trend. Otherwise, we're going to do something like this, where we're almost going to top off here, where we hit resistance, resistance, a much lower resistance. So every bull pop here was weaker. And now we're getting closer to an area. This red line likes to catch up. So I wouldn't be surprised if we'll stall out in this area while Litecoin kind of catches its breath. A very nice move. Daily bull cross still in progress here. This just started. We have to see confirmation. We have to wait for this to happen. This could still deflect bearishly as this day progresses. We're only an hour into the daily candle. And you see how bearish our um histogram is and we're just basically trying to start to climb out of that so some nice bullish signals on litecoin this is a big move we went from about 50 bucks 55 bucks we're now over 60 and holding it's very encouraging we see precedent for a couple bucks higher 64 66 maybe but every dollar higher is getting more and more resistance happening okay especially our four hour i don't like this here we are above for the second candle. We are above our upper BB. Now, remember, we're pretty tight here. I want to show you, is there an example? We're still pretty tight here, but there is no other time that we can see us being above our upper BB and not wicking out. This is a nasty wick. This was a nasty wick. So right now, we're in an area where we wick out because we are above our upper BB on our four hour chart. So be very careful if you're buying anything in this area here. Everything tells me because of history that if we're breaking our BB on our four hour, we do not like to close up there for more than at least one candle. So we could close above, but the next candle will probably bring us lower. Again, wait for a better entry if you want to kind of scalp Bitcoin, uh, sorry, Litecoin long. And then again, we're seeing we're really toppy here on our stochastic four hour as well. And we're getting almost, but not quite, but almost to our 70 region on our four hour. So maybe a couple more bucks left in Litecoin, but I wouldn't go crazy on this price here. I'd look for some sort of pullback and a better re entry. <clears throat> All right, good stuff. Let me uh, pull up my Litecoin over here. I did the chart earlier in the day. Let's go find it. All right, so. Let me get this sucker loaded, and there we go. Alrighty. Okay, so I did this chart earlier today um, already. So here's what I have. I have this weekly death cross that is going to cross. So this will cross here on the weekly for Litecoin. Uh, I'm just waiting for it. Like I've said, I feel that this will be what drives the price back down uh, crypto wide, right? So this is kind of what I've been waiting for. You still got a couple days for this to play out. I know a lot of the alts are all going and looking like they could finish out very bullish, but this is a big warning sign for me, especially on Litecoin uh, with this big cross playing out. So the uh, the daily on your daily, you got a red that's bleeding out, and let's see if that sucker... See, all right, so we did flip this to a, red, a green one and two. This is great, just like we did on Ethereum. Uh, we did... Uh, uh, let's see, price two hit... All right, got, so we hit our historical bottom. 
we bounced very nicely. Um, you know, we, we called the bounce. Here was my bounce. I had these arrows going all the way up here. Uh, this is my top for Litecoin. So I, I have a tough time with Litecoin going a little bit over this. Now, if this does get over this, my next target would be right here, 66 bucks. So I will go ahead and add this now. So we'll add this if this is our top target. Now, I'm not fully committed to this target right here. I still feel that there is a lot of weakness. And, and looking at my charts and the more that I do look at my charts, the more I am... I, I'm just, I'm not feeling the FOMO right here, okay? I'm definitely not feeling the FOMO. If we did continue up, this would be one more pop up. Uh, I just, I, guys, I gotta say, like, I feel we have a little more room, and I feel we could wick up a little higher, uh, but I just, I'm not, I don't know what it is. I mean, I, I need, I need there's nothing fundamentally right now for me. I mean, I'm just not seeing this. What Now, with all the crazy movement, we see these coins moving around and these big, massive quantities of BTC. I mean, you know, this is this was a good buying opportunity. I mean, we knew we came down. We knew we hit the bottom. We knew we were going to pop off here. And, you know, we knew that this was going to get, we were going to get our bounce in here. We did get our bounce. It's just, I don't really know how high we're going to go up. Right, I'm just not. Go. What are your thoughts? You know, Chone. Yeah, if if you could bring up uh, my screen here, I got a yeah, great go double chart it. going on here. Um, so th th this is a great way how I'm uh, Bollinger Bands on a very long time frame or a monthly chart. And Vamp talks a lot about Litecoin kind of leading the way and giving us some sort of a direction in terms of where uh, Bitcoin might. Might, might follow. So what I have here is we see Litecoin, which the, is our on first On the left search. side. On the left side. Yeah, right here. This is Litecoin. And what we're seeing here is um, we're basically seeing the very first time our candle touched our middle BB, <clears throat> it bounced a little bit and it held support. And then the next month, it also held support and actually had a little bit of a nice bullish wick there. We can kind of see that as well. Um, but the third month, uh, the middle BB failed to hold, and now is acting as very strong resistance. Now, what we see here in Bitcoin, which is this chart over here, is we're seeing something where, for the first month, this is the first time that the middle BB uh, has been tested as support, and it's held very nicely. Nice little bounce there, so we like to see that a major support line on the first touch always acts as a very nice bounce area. It's a great trick. It's a good, nice little long scalp there. But what we have here is the precedent we have set by Litecoin, where this, this monthly candle probably bounced actually a little bit higher, but gave a lot of this back here. So even though we're doing a nice bullish tap here, and even though we're actually currently, like right now, um, holding above our previous month's um, low, um, or sorry, open, um, we're so teetering here on giving a lot of this back. Remember, we have about, what, 12 days left in the month? So we still have time here for this to kind of pull out this move here. Either we go a lot more bullish or we give a lot of this back here. But my point is we see Litecoin that it only held the middle BB for so long until it failed to hold support. So I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged that for the first touch, the middle BB for Bitcoin is holding support. But if we want to use Litecoin as a primer of potentially what's going to come, what's going to happen, we see that eventually – we have a little nice bullish pop, and this doesn't necessarily mean it will go exactly like Bitcoin did, where it took, or Litecoin took three months to break. Bitcoin could only take two months to break. But this could be a scenario where our middle BB fails to hold support, becomes resistance, and puts in a similar situation to what Litecoin do now. I want to just bring up one more thing. If you think about where Litecoin bottom, where did Litecoin bottom on most exchanges to the dollar? <clears throat> and it bottomed at and this is kind of fascinating it bottomed at 60 sorry 49 dollars and 33 cents so let's just play what if that's the low for bitcoin four thousand nine hundred 
and $33. Something to keep in mind because if Litecoin found bottom with a break of 50, but just a little bit, and was able to rally from basically 50 to almost 60, gave back, uh, I'll tell you exactly what it gave back, gave back 55% of that, <clears throat> right? Perfect fib bounce here, and then rode back up to 62. So this could be a situation where it's telling us that Bitcoin may, when it bear breaks, if it bear breaks, will bottom somewhere around 5,000, will have a nice bounce, potentially back up to 6K, come back a little bit to around the fifty three to fifty four hundred dollars and then bounce bullishly again and break the 6K and kind of float around with a nice bounce there. Is Litecoin giving us direction to where Bitcoin may be headed? Mm, yeah, look at how far up Litecoin is on your BB. That's uh, crazy. Yeah, I don't like that. that. That's, 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 that's overbought. That's just over mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to look at, you know, uh, and listen, everybody, I just, you know, I, I'm so close here. I know a lot of people want this to go bullish, but like I said, I've just, I, uh, 6,800's kind of my toppy toppy. You know, if this goes toppy toppy and I, I'd be looking for a wick up here, right? This would be my, this would be my, my top side. Listen, we get a, 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 a one more run up here. You know what I'm saying? And this is it, but you know, I still want to warn everybody that running up here is still bearish because you do have this massive head and shoulders platform that is that's that's just waiting. This massive head and shoulders formation. Now, technically, this can still act as a shoulder, even though it's a little bit short here, uh, and or you could get a wick up that would give you that wick also for that to play out with this big uh, head and shoulders formation. So I just want you all to be real careful playing longs here. And getting, uh, you know, too FOMO-ish of what's going to come in the near term. Uh, let's just, I, I want to run just through a couple really quick alts. Um, uh, oh, and then, so we did this chart right here. Let's just run through one or two more quick alts. Uh, could you do an alt for me? Sure. Uh, Chone, and it is, hold on a second. Let me tell you what, what it is. Um, can you do quark chain? What's the symbol? I have no idea. One of uh, the members is asking quark, quark Q U A R K chain. <clears throat> uh, what exchange is it on? Because it's not on, on uh, pundit uh, charts. I, I have no idea. You don't, you don't find yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a trading view one, unfortunately. Yeah, it's probably only available to start on the right. sorry, John. Quant stamp, yeah. We tried quark quark oh wait, hold on hold on quark oh q w a r k i got it oh I got it. you got it all right cool uh all right so yeah i'll do that sure i'll do go for it go for it no problem let's take a peek here all right looks like it's um <clears throat> let's look at the bitrix coin all right so let's do a do a fifty thousand square foot here quick quick monthly look here so all right this was our ico Couple nice bullish runs, nice monthly. Let me see what the volume we had here. So yeah, all right, August amazing here, about five cents from eight cents. So parabolic gave a lot of that back. Went parabolic again during the alt boom of 2018 January. Went up to 85 cents from 20 cents. So a four bagger, another parabolic move. And now we're back to literally ICO territory, daily chart here. And a couple things. Uh, the Bollinger's are definitely tight. This was a very slow bleed, okay? Um, I don't have to fib it because I know we're 100% here. <laughs> We've broken, we're, right? We were actually putting in new lows. So the market's putting in new lows. This is very bearish because basically this price here – as support is kind of null and void. Now we're, we're flirting with it, so we might scoop under and try and go go a little higher here. But this could set in a whole new market discovery price. Uh, what are we at? Two two and a half cents. Am I reading that right? Point zero two seven. Yeah. So we're at two and a half cents there. Uh, I mean, do the EMAs matter? I mean, 
were basically hold here, okay, or you go back to some sort of a, a death, a spiral to nowhere. I just want to, I don't know what the the Q, QW, there it is. I just want to see what kind of the, the share structure is, if you don't mind. Uh, <clears throat> oh, it's a, it's actually a low, a low cap coin, uh, 206 million. It's not bad. There's 62 million out in circulation. Uh, yeah, price is two cents. Market cap is 1.7 million. This is a very low market cap, but also a very low supply. I kind of like that. Um, it's not like an ADA or a Lumen that has tens of billions. So that's, that's definitely notable. Um, but in terms of the actual value, the market's telling us we really have lost support here in our originality here. This is an example, people, where you don't hodl. Okay, you take your major profits on especially a parabolic move. And this coin has been very tradable. It's given you three really nice parabolic moves. And kind of each one gave you a little bit more time to kind of scale out of your position. Mm -hmm. Pure example of how don't be greedy when you get these amazing things here. Now, can we make a case for another parabolic move? It's very possible. It's very possible. But you have to argue you could go a little lower. I mentioned the shirt. This I kind of like this. This doesn't have a lot of coin out there. It's it's very cheap comparably. It does seem to be only on Bitrix, which is an issue. It kind of, uh, uh, yeah, it's only on Bitrix. So it's I mean it's it's valid as a trading coin. It just doesn't have a lot of money flow because Bitrix doesn't have a money a lot of money flow. If this were to get listed on a Binance, that would be a game changer. I think um, because I kind of like the the way the share structure is, but this chart tells me that this is a dying coin. It tells me that the ICO is liquidating. Any early investors are continuing to liquidate. The volume is bupkis, and if you're scooping in now, it's, 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 it could be a risk trade. It could be uh, let's see what what happens. It could be due for a bounce. Uh, what's the RSI at here? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the RSI says I can go much lower. This is a no volume stability RSI here. It doesn't really mean much. Um, yeah, it's just a pure risk play. I, I don't know what more I could say about it. Yeah, uh, that is, yeah. That, you know what, the, the thing about the low cap coins though, I mean, if you go out there and you do get to be a member of one of these pump and dump groups, you can make mm. some good money. You know, you can make some yeah. good money in these pump and dump groups. I mean, this is what they do. They go out, they find these low cap coins, uh, they buy them up, they throw a bot on them, they all pile, they piggy pile in and they make some good money and then they leave people holding their their Johnsons in their hands. And, and you know, a, a great trick I like to use, if I was to play this, and the, the only play in this is to catch a, a, a rocket ship, basically, to dab your, you want to have your sales set at a kind of a crazy price. But if you're buying into this thing, for that potential, maybe this one could be, as you said, pump and dump. That could be a good candidate. There's a low cap out there. Wouldn't take a lot for somebody with some deep pockets to start loading this thing and create some sort of a FOMO issue with, you know, some uh, social media help. But for that to happen, the way you would position yourself to trade this is if you do scale in and start setting some sales at 20%. 30%, 50%, maybe even 100%. And potentially you could catch a rocket ship wick, which are very quick, um, don't always have a lot of liquidity behind them. But if you could get some of your orders filled in some of those major percent gains in a very quick amount of time, that could be a play. And we constantly see that in a lot of altcoins, the quick one hour wick that sells off quickly, but there's money flow behind it. And if you already have your sales in your exchange that's a good way to kind of set it and forget it as well as assuming to take potentially a little bleed out because of just what the chart says about it yeah all right so what let's go we're going to look at two more coins and then we are going to call it a day uh first we're going to run etc so let's bring up our etc charts uh, so I, I have switched over to, to neutral uh, on this, and you can see here's my wider range. I have this big giant wedge right here, A, B, C, D, E. I expected this to come up and then drop out. Now, this all could change because, you know, you, you do have all of the Coinbase uh, pump and dump stuff going on, the good. You know, and that's, 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 that's wonderful for ETC. Uh, I still think it's a useless coin. Uh, well, not a useless coin, but I think that this coin should be dying with uh, all the other coins. 
but uh, yeah, you know, I switched my uh, over to neutral. I do feel neutral about this simply because there is FA involved. You do have a fundamental analysis with your Coinbase, uh, putting out little snippets, little blurbs, little hype things, and that's good. That's great. Uh, you do have a weekly death cross that is still new. Yeah, you do have the day, the three-day bear cross, which is confirmed. Uh, you do have a brand new two-day death cross. Right, so there it is. There's that brand new two-day death cross right there. All right, you can see where all your MAs are clustered right up here in the fifteen sixteen dollar range. Uh, you on the, you do have a daily. Uh, so if you go back over here to your daily, uh, even with all this, you started. Uh, you came down, hit this great reversal candle, red eight. Now this is an imperfected red eight. I expect one to four candles pull back. You could count this eight. This could be one, two, three. This number three could be the four. Uh, but it, you could still get a green four up here and then expect one more retracement for this to come down. Now I have a ton of resistance up here. Like I said, the 15 to $16 range, you're still down in 14. Uh, I, I just, you know, looking at this coin, uh, it's it's a harder one to play. It is a very risky play because you know you can be oh I'm gonna short this and then Coinbase makes an announcement and there goes your short. You just got beat in the pants. Uh, so I would be very careful and or you know Coinbase could always come out with a uh, oh we tried to do this and it failed. Their first launch of the pro of the failed, which wouldn't be you know Coinbase is a completely crap. Uh, existence uh, exchange I mean they have a lot of issues on their exchange how do you have so many issues with so much money and you're absolutely making a murdering just killing it and they just can't hire people to make a solid and stable platform a lot of problems with Coinbase uh, as they go through and try to figure out all their woes but uh, you know I feel that this coin is at the mercy of Coinbase right now and if Coinbase wants to pump this coin, it is super easy for them to do it. If Coinbase wants to dump this coin, it is super easy for them to do it. So that is my warning for ETC. Take it away, Chon. Yeah, perfect. I love it. Um, yeah, I agree with all that. I got a couple. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I'm on the daily here. Um, so we, we, we bounced on, this is the UTC, we bounced off of 786, full retrace of our bottom top here. That's great. We had a nice bottom hammer candle here that brought us higher. That's great. Um, but what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at um, this kind of falling wedge here. And to me, the, this is a bearish pattern. Um, I can kind of show it a little better here, and then I'm kind of just hide my volume right Good. Okay, so and I'm gonna do this and perfect beautiful. Okay, so yeah, uh, this is a falling wedge um, I don't like this. I expect this to kind of bounce around here now our bull target for this wedge top off in a couple days could be as high as maybe $16.50 $16.30 cents maybe a couple more, more bucks higher than where we are now uh, But we have found strong resistance. now we did wick out here above it and we found resistance at our 55 here so if we could get a bull break, this could break through, but I wouldn't expect it to hold like these wicks show us here. And <clears throat> it actually took these wicks here to top off here. So any break of this, a lot of profit has shown to be taken once that resistance line is broken. So my best case is a couple more bucks. My worst case is a retest of our lower channel support. Maybe we could hold 11, maybe 1075, but we're going lower here and I we're all bearish on the chart. I think this is a giant head and shoulders. I'm not calling for this to play out neckline to head because that would put the coin at like negative 30 bucks. But I don't like the pattern. Although you could go super crazy, you know, long and say, yeah, I guess we're kind of putting in some sort of a higher low historically because we were at a dollar and now we're at, you know, uh, uh, $13. So it's still a great move not compared to here, but definitely compared to here. So overall, long term from a year ago, sure, we're on a bullish uptrend, but we give a lot of this back. And what would it take <clears throat> to, um, I guess, this line of support once touched is now held. A second touch of this line, maybe we got a little more of a little bounce, all right? This line here, I, I feel will, will fail 
and then we break it, and then we kind of come back and do a little back test of it, like we do in all our major support lines here. But again, that takes us to a, a longer term bear scenario, maybe something like this, and then kind of down there. The last thing I want to say about ETC, I'll just bring up quickly here, is the uh, BTC uh, pairing. This is a chart I've had up for months. I tweeted about it like months ago of this giant triangle of support and resistance. We broke bullish. We came back down. We found support at our bottom. And now we're once again finding support on our outer rim here. So I like this from a bullish divergence standpoint. I actually think the Satoshi level could hold bullishly to Bitcoin for some time here. That does not mean that the USD uh, can be made money over long term. And I agree with Vamp. He basically says Coinbase has a lot of play now in this not co not completely capitulating. It's their newest product they have on Coinbase. Coinbase has a lot of people that use it, especially in the United States, and it behooves them to let this crash. So I'd expect it to hold at least $10, $11 for some time, but Bitcoin breaking bearish will definitely pull this low. Yep. All right. So we are going to go over and do my favorite, second favorite pump and dump coin. Uh, I got TRX loaded. Come on over here, you big daddy. Uh, so TRX weekly candle. There you go. Uh, you know, there's that. We just got to keep an eye on this candle. These weekly candles on all these alts as they get close to closing out. These are very bullish candles. Okay. Uh, now, I have to say, I have seen bearish and also bullish candles that are extremely, extremely bearish and extremely, extremely bullish. Both of them completely take a dump and get wrecked lately in this marketplace. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we get a, the most wicked bullish candle ever and the bottom just falls out. Uh, so you see that we are up. There is no support uh, we have broken all of the supports for uh, for uh, Tron. Uh, we're now just on Fibs. That's all we got here, really, is Fibonacci. Uh, and then you've got this last last ditch drop support down here, almost at uh, 213 Satoshi's. Uh, that would that's uh, that would be a hell of a hell of a drop for it. Now I did call for some up. Uh, we did come up and hit my first target, uh, my first set of resistance. Uh, I, I do feel that this is, you know, I, I like Tron because there's there's a bunch of whales. They hold a bunch of Tron. And, you know, I, I like that you can play this coin and make some good returns. I mean, this is a really good, you know, you were all the way down here at one point, uh, at point zero one six, So that's 1.6 cents. And you're all the way up here right now. You, I mean, you came all the way up to 2.4 cents. It's a great return. It would have been a great play. You've got a bunch of Chinese whales. They're having fun with this coin. God bless them. Uh, kind of as you go down the list, uh, you've got the uh, weekly candle putting in a massive bullish reversal. Uh, we showed that over here. There it is. Uh, three day has just got it. Let's go. I want to take a look at the three day. We did get a long signal. There we go. You got a long signal from the B scalper. So the B scalper gave you a long signal. This is really good. I like it when this gives me a confirmation of this long signal. So this is a, a great use of the indicator right there. I love using the indicator on the three day chart. Uh, you do have all your resistance right here. It's parked right above you. See that, uh, on the three day, you've got the seven MA, there it is. It's just it's parked right there. I'm gonna scoot these up right there. All right, there it is. So you've got a lot of resistance right above you with that seven MA. Uh, the two day came down, and let's go down and take a look at the two day. An imperfected nine. Now I don't like to see this. Right, this is bouncing. This two day still hasn't reversed into being a green one yet. Uh, you did get this, uh, so you did get a green one and two. I'm looking for a one to four candle reversal. You can see all of my resistance points are up here on this higher level. Uh, no help with golden crosses, bear crosses, really. Uh, you did get this golden cross that does that has completed on the uh, six hour. You also got a golden cross on the four hour, so you did get this really wicked pump. Now I did this. This was done hours and hours and hours ago. So, uh, so there you go. There it is. Uh, that was my TRX and not much more I can say about Tron other than it is a, it is a fun coin to play. Uh, and I, and I would feel between this and EOS, I like to play, I prefer EOS though.
Go for it, Sean. Yeah, just two two quick things to add. I agree with all that. Um, we basically see where we kind of ended out here really long, um, which looks like a wave three, basically, of, of, a, of, a, of a downtrend here. We wicked out at the two, two, three, six level uh, based on a, a wave one extension here where, where we had previously topped off in July. And I'm just kind of playing around here. Let's just say that we just did a nice bullish wave four and or we're currently still into it. A couple things I'd say about that. The size and the length of this wave two, if this is wave two, it's just to me that wave four, <clears throat> it's it's kind of comparable. It almost looks like it's a one-to-one. -one. Um, that's interesting because normally you see either a short wave two and a long wave four, a long wave, wave two. But I guess you can also see a perfect one-to-one, -one, and we kind of have that right now. And if that were the case, and if we have wicked out saying they basically started our last bearish wave down, our wave five, I would put a support area of the 236 area here right around 18, 18 cents. Interestingly enough, that also corresponds here with this area of price history of support. So if we do pull back bearishly, this is a very strong area here. Um, that I think would would hold at first, if first touched on a bounce. Uh, but for continuation, it definitely has to hold. And if it breaks, I think this basically would signal that a break of 18 cents would basically say we're going to basically retest our lower 16 cents where we bounce and then set in a break for lower if that does not hold. So I'd be curious to see if we can push higher from where we are. We had a great move the past day or so, excellent day yesterday. Profits are going to get start to get taken, and uh, you know our, our EMAs are ahead of us. 100 MA on our per hour, going to hit their next on our daily chart. Let me bring up my 12 and my 26. It's here to see what, what's, what's hitting us next here because we see uh, 26 there we go. Uh, so yeah, so we, we basically have found resistance right on our 12 uh, on our daily chart. Oh, I'm sorry, we're just holding support above, barely, which is interesting because that's the first time with this candle here that we're actually able to close above. So holding this line here is very important. If we do, I guarantee you, or I'm pretty confident, I should say guarantee, that our EMA 26, our peach line here, which is slowly falling, will be our next bull target around 27 cents and falling here. So it all rides and holding our 12. Right now, we're kind of flirting with it. We're barely holding on and kind of a bearish wick. There's only our daily. We're just getting started here. But if we can't hold this again, I would definitely expect a tap here. A failure to hold, this becomes resistance one more time, and we could definitely retrace from this really nice green candle. This is a Marabuzu. This is a Marabuzu. No look on the bottom, no look on Ooh, top. So Look at that. What is that, the daily? That. Yeah, there you That's go. The daily. Go All right, so it doesn't get much better than that. So that's bullish. Okay, that's why I kind of expect this area to hold here. And I, that, that would be my next bull target. It would be somewhere around 26, 27. So a really good candle. Now, a pullback, I would look to basically retest the top of this wick here on the daily we had back on the 15th. And that puts us at a strong support right around 20 cents even. So I would look for that to hold initially tested and go from there but our daily this day is uh has a lot to do with it i want to close green i don't want to shoot and star here okay a shooting star on a daily would be bad but we have a very long way to go and the last thing i'll briefly say is our bollinger is going to sense here aha our so our middle bb resistance at 25 and falling i would also expect that to be strong resistance so very strong resistance 26 cents to 27 cents Okay, if we can get up there, I would not take longs there. I'd kind of scalp out your longs or potentially maybe some shorts because that's very strong in that area. Yep. All right. And okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, I I I am not I don't like this trading area. I just don't. Um, I wish I had better news for everybody. I wish I could say I was very bullish on this, but I am in fact not. I am, let me try to find, where is my, there we go. Um, yeah, I just, I, I just don't, I don't like, I don't like anything. I don't like anything right now. I, I, I just feel that. You know, this is just a sideways movement, and I had that on one of my charts, you know, bad, 
bad, just very bad. Um, I just want everybody to be safe right now. You know, this is just is very bearish still, you know, and I know there's a lot of people, you know, out there saying this thing can run all the way up to 71, 7,200. And I get it. I, I get it. Uh, you know, it, and it is possible, but I want you to know there's limited upside here and you guys have to be really, really careful. And in, in our chats, in our, uh, you know, if you guys come over and you're in our VIP chats, you know, you guys are going to see that there is a lot of, you know, really good information. We have our targets, you know, we have our indicators that are showing, you know, our bubble charts and everything else that show us what our targets are and where we think we're at and where we think we're going. And Guys, I just I, I just don't like anything right now with this whole trading area. And and I'm talking the whole trading area right here. I don't like I don't like any of this action, this sideways action. Just the, the only thing that I can have to really one of the signs I really get when I look at all this and I look at uh Jonas's Bollinger bands and they're squeezing together and this that's what I see. I see all this sideways movement is a resetting of the indicators from an absolutely insane fall, right? I mean, we just fell a, a, a massive amount. We just fell 2,000, 2,400 points, whatever it is. Uh, we just fell a long, long way. And we have very little price action here. You know, our price is just really, really sucks. You know, our price just really blows. And I think that that's just kind of where I, I don't... I don't trust anything here. So that's that's all I got for everybody. You know, I wish I had more. Joan, final thoughts? Yeah, I don't have much to add to that. I agree. Get your best bang for your buck, your best risk versus reward. And, um, you know, this is a situation here where some some nice gains over the past couple of days have been made. But, uh, you know, we have to continuously bring up the dead cat bounce aspect of what's going on here. We're flirting with areas of 100 billion market cap on Bitcoin. We're flirting areas with 200 billion, the overall crypto market. We're having a great bounce from yesterday's price action. All of these alts, we'd like to see continuation, but Bitcoin still runs the show. And, you know, we're, we're hopeful that we can consolidate on this moves here, kind of prevent some of these bear crosses from completing. But we're in this area here now where anything can happen. And with low volume, remember it's all relative, but this is a relatively low volume area. Any big move, any price movement, especially with all this Bitcoin being uh, transferred around, what's going on with Tether, um, could create a scenario where we could have a really quick, uh, volatile uh, price action in a very short amount of time um, if certain areas show very strong rejection. Uh, as we talked about earlier, sixty-seven to sixty-eight hundred dollars. Uh, if we can get up there, it'd be very interesting to see kind of how the price reacts. I want to see some follow through, and after yesterday's really nice green gains, I would not be expect. I would not be surprised if a lot of profits are taken. So, as Vam said, you know, just be careful, keep keep these trades tight because right now, the direction in in Bitcoin and crypto is um, is very. Uh, very foggy, I guess is, is the right way to say it. And uh, it's very news driven right now. So things happen quickly and the market reacts to them quickly. I am very optimistic with some of the things down the road, uh, you know, TFs, the uh, Goldman Sachs adding Bitcoin desk to their overall platform, Wall Street's adoption of crypto. These are things I'm very bullish about. Um, but for right now and for what's setting up and for really... And I'm on, I'm very serious about this for what the chart is looking like. You know, we are chartists looking at the long term chart, and we're we're chartists, but we're also realists. And right now, we're seeing that um, this is very tedious and a very uh, risky time now. So be safe, be smart, and uh, stay tuned because we have a lot of great content to put out that um, we think can help you in these times. Yeah. So, you know, and that's just, you know, just be safe trading right here. Uh, I just, I still feel we have limited upside, even if we get up to 6,900 from 66 to 6,900 is, is a great scalp, but it is a, it is a bad long trade. Okay. So I just want everybody to be real careful here. 
Uh, set your alarms. Listen, if you guys do have alarms, go to your 12-hour uh, RSI. Set yourself some alarms at 53.4553, and this should give you a good heads up when to switch your trades to bullish. Okay, so there's a piece of uh, advice for you uh, from, from the vamp and a good little alarm trigger that'll remind you. But, uh, you know, listen, if you guys get a chance, I just want to remind you one time, come on over, give us some love. Listen, we got to, you know, it, I, I wish we had a better show to give you today. It's just boring ass trading day, right? It's boring ass trading day. That's all we got. Just boring trading. Uh, if you guys do get a chance, throw some likes up on our channel today. Hopefully we can come to you tomorrow. We have a lot more uh, uh, good news. Uh, we do. I didn't do the bubble charts today. I did them for the members. Um, uh, Chonis has also got a bunch of videos. Come on in. Check out those videos. Check out his targets. But uh, today for us, guys, it's just kind of a, a blah trading day. It's just blah. So from Vamp Blah and Chone Blah and all of us at Until One Mill Blah, <laughs> we, be safe out there trading. Say bye, Chone. Bye, guys. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.